Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my crash course in formal logic. In this section we're going to begin our study of category logic. Uh, this will be a briefer uh, lesson than most that I've offered online. Uh, we're just going to cover categorical propositions. Now Aristotle is the person credited with inventing the discipline of logic. He did that way back in the fourth century BC. Pretty impressive. But he thought the proper uh, subject for logic to examine was categories and their relations to one another. That's not an uncontroversial claim, but it motivates uh, a lot of his other philosophy that I'll have to uh, present on in other video lectures. So a categorical proposition is a proposition that relates two categories or classes indicating how they do or don't share members. For example, if somebody says professional athletes eat healthy diets, there's two classes involved here, professional athletes and those who eat healthy diets. I'll return to this example later. Or, for example, skateboarders are not allowed on public sidewalks. Well, you've got skateboarders on the one hand and you have persons not allowed on public sidewalks on the other. Again, there are two classes or categories being mentioned. Or to give another example, one of my computers is malfunctioning. Well, you got a kind of small category, your computers, and malfunctioning things. Again, two classes or categories in each case. Or, not every rainbow has a pot of gold. Sad but true. Well, what that's relating is the class of rainbows to the class of things that possess pots of gold. Or Steven Spielberg shoots blockbusters. That'd be a category, Steven Spielberg, that would just have one member in it. And persons who shoot blockbusters is, of course, a slightly larger but still rather small category. Well, what these all have in common is that each of them has a subject term that represents the subject class. For example, in our skateboarders illustration, it was the class of skateboarders. And then you have some predicate term, a term that represents the predicate class, something that you predicate of your subject. A uh, person's not allowed on public sidewalks in this case. Typically, you th uh, a characteristic or property, P, is being predicated of some subject in each case. So when we talk, it looks as though we're always saying something about something, and that's pretty much to say we're always predicating about some subject. In fact, even in this uh, sentence here, uh, you could translate this sentence as all times that we speak are times when we predicate about some subject. So the present example is no exception to the rule. In fact, Aristotle thought that every proposition could be reformulated as some type of S is P categorical statement. He may not be right about that. There are some exceptions to the rule, but it's amazing how many of our propositions that we speak of in everyday talk can be reformulated into this subject predicate form. Now, doing that type of translating into a subject predicate form is actually a skill that needs to be developed. There's exactly four types of categorical prop proposition or class relationships, and Aristotle laid them out. There are some that say the whole of class S is included in the class P. Some say the whole of the subject class is excluded from the predicate class. And then you have situations where a part of the S class is included in the P class, and so again, times when there's a part of the S class that's excluded from the P class. So when we looked at uh, our example involving athletes, we saw a case in which the whole S class was being included in the P class. The person clearly wanted to say that when it comes to athletes and uh, healthy eaters, all the athletes are in the category of healthy eaters. We'll just block out this uh, little section in the red to illustrate that fact. And when we talked about skateboarders, what we found was the person was probably trying to assert that no skateboarders are things or persons allowed on public sidewalks. So when we want to illustrate that, we just make sure that we block out the section in the middle to illustrate that there is none in that overlap, no skateboarders in that overlapping area. Or when it was asserted that one of my computers is malfunctioning, it just means that one of my computers is in the malfunctioning things category. We usually denote that by push, just putting an X in the middle to mark the spot where that one thing is. And when it was asserted that not all rainbows are things with pots of gold, well, we could have made a stronger claim. We all know that there's none of them with a pot of gold. But that proposition asserts that there's at least one rainbow that's a thing without a pot of gold. And uh, since I want to illustrate this properly, I better get that out of the pot picture of gold. here, right? 
we usually illustrate that fact or that proposition with an X in the rainbow circle as well. So we need to say a little bit about standard form. A standard form is a proposition that expresses one of these four relationships well with complete clarity. For example, it's going to be a substance uh, substitution instance of either all S or P, no S or P, some S or P, and some S or not P. So by way of contrast, all S are not P is not a statement in standard form because it lacks the clarity that these four crystal clear propositions have. So it could be translated as no S or P and or alternatively as some S are not P. For example, all prisoners are not sad and all prisoners are not free. Now notice that has the form all are not in both cases. But in the first example, all prisoners are not sad, that just means that some prisoners are not sad. If somebody says all prisoners are not free, well, that means all prisoners lack uh, the property of freedom. None of them are free. So notice again, this uh, form does not have the crystal clarity that the four examples we saw previously enjoys. So we need to talk a little bit more about these standard forms. Now these four examples are the only ones that we're going to do uh, use in this section on categorical logic in this class. But let's take the components here. First you have quantifiers. That's probably the most noticeable thing. All, no, or some uh, denotes how much of the subject class that you're going to be talking about. And it tells you how much of the subject class is included in the predicate class. And the copula, well, that's really just a functional uh, term. It's just linking up the subject and predicate class. And remember, to use only are or are not, other things like is or has, uh, those will not be used in this course. We're strictly going to stick with are and are not as our copulas. So let's try an example. Suppose somebody says all persons in the rock band U2 are persons capable of playing bass, bass guitar. You can divide this up into our crystal clear standard form really easily. The quantifier is going to be all, and the subject term is going to be members of U2. The copula is are and the predicate term, persons capable of playing guitar, or rather playing the bass guitar, I need to be more clear. And when I point out these uh, terms and highlight them in different colors, you can easily see how this sentence is divided up into all the elements that we just discussed. So going back to the examples that we used earlier, somebody says uh, professional athletes eat healthy diets, what they probably intend to say is that all professional athletes are persons who eat healthy diets. The quantifier is going to be all, the subject term would be professional athletes, the copula are, and predicate term persons who eat healthy diets. You have to do a little translating to get to this point, but it's, uh, it's a talent that develops with time. Or if somebody says no skateboarders are persons allowed in public parks, uh, well, that's the proper trans standard form translation of skateboarders are not allowed in public park on public sidewalks, rather. In this example, I'll just highlight those uh, terms where they show up in the sentence. And you can see that it has all four of the elements that we just discussed uh, when we talked about standard form. A uh, quantifier, a subject class, copula, and a predicate class. That's all there is to it. Or, if somebody says one of my computers is malfunctioning, well, that would mean some computers of mine are malfunctioning things. You notice we had to finagle the terms there to make it work out grammatically, but the quantifier is going to be some, the subject term will be computers of mine, R will be the copula, and the predicate term is going to be malfunctioning things. And again, if I highlight those in that sentence, you can see all four of the elements show up in our standard forms, the translation of our original sentence. And previously, we said not every rainbow has a pot of gold. Well, you have to do some finagling to get the standard form translation of that, but it clearly means to exclude some rainbows from the class of things that have pots of gold. So the proper translation is some rainbows are not things with pots of gold. And the quantifier will be some, the subject term rainbows, the copula are not, and the predicate term things with pots of gold. And if I highlight them here in the, in the original sentence, you can see each of those four terms and this time is it's a unique situation. The copula is different from all the other examples we looked at. This is the one time where you're allowed to use the copula are not. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys have covered an awful lot of logic in my previous lessons, about 20 minutes in every lesson. I promised you a short one this time. So that's all for now. Wait on my for my exercises and my next logic lesson, which will be coming up soon. Take care.